to our series on sacred femininity. I'm Shannon Evans and this is episode four and we're going to hop in to talk about the life-giving nature of sacred femininity and what it is and what it's not and maybe what it could be. So let's jump in. So when we're talking about the life-giving aspect of femininity, the first thing that comes to mind is obviously childbearing and child raising, um, the birthing and nurture of our children, which is incredibly important as a mom of five myself, like yes and amen, there is so much dignity and honor in that. However, our capacity for giving life does not end there. And for many women, it doesn't touch on that at all. And so some of us will not um, have children, whether by choice or what by circumstance. And I think it's really important for even for those of us who do have children to be recognized um, that we bring life in so many other ways as well. I think we do women a great disservice when we limit um, limit their life-giving capacity to only one thing. So in the spirit of that, let's zoom out a little bit and see the many ways that the, the life-giving nature of femininity takes form. One thing we have to ask, what does it mean to bear life? What does it mean to nourish and nurture the world around us? And I think it's important to say this is not always it doesn't always look warm and fuzzy. Not not everyone demonstrates their femininity in ways that are flowery or soft or um, even particularly approachable. I think I, I think as human beings, we're all hopefully moving towards this goal of being um, people of wholeness and health who in our femininity do extend a hospitality of heart, who are um, particularly receptive to the souls of others and who are inclusive and welcoming and, and in that way warm. But the way it looks from person to person is certainly going to be different because our personalities are all different, right? Um, but one way that, uh, that we can express that um, beyond motherhood and the raising of children is caregiving for other individuals. So whether that's um, the elderly, whether that's children that are not our own, whether that is um, in the workplace as counselors, psychologists, social workers, nurses, doctors, there are so many ways that we can extend that life-giving nature of God um, one-on-one through two individuals. There's also a huge demand for the feminine life-giving nature to show up in bigger spheres, in business, in politics, in social structures, in the structures of our church. Um, in every sphere of society, there is there is a lack of that feminine um ability to bring life, to bring hope, to bring connectivity, um, to humanize things, really. I think that that's something so beautiful about our sacred femininity is that it, that it humanizes, that it softens and brings compassion. So we also would be um, sorely missing out if we neglected to realize that the femininity that we share with the earth, with life cycles and fertility, whether or not um, we like disregarding the fertility of our bodies, there is a, a fertility of spirit within femininity that is displayed in the world around us. I mean, look at the world outside right now. It's spring, it's bursting to life. Um, there, There is an element of femininity about spring and it's not because there's a lot of flowers around, although that's a really good thing too. <laughs> it's, it's this life-giving spirit. It's this hope after the darkness, hope after the cold, long, dreary win winter. And I think that is something that uh, femininity offers so beautifully. Back to connectivity, um, the way that we uh, connect, the way that we seek to connect with one another, with God, with creation, and back to that earth connection, um, those are all ways that we bring life to the world around us. So all the ways that we bear life, um, including but also in addition to motherhood. 
We have approaches, ideas, changes, suggestions, visions that are person-based, connected, compassionate, and intuitive um, that the world desperately needs. As I mentioned in those spheres before, all of those spheres, think about how the world how different the world would be if words like intuitive, compassionate, person-based, if those were the kinds of words that were steering the ship in politics and business and our social structures in our church. The, the sacred feminine is needed because we have so much balance to bring to, frankly, um, an order of the universe right now that is really out of balance. We are needed, whether we are being asked for, whether we are invited or not. Um, the sacred the sacred feminine is begging in, in our day to make herself known. Um, and so we've really got to, to exercise that and not be content to be put in boxes, not be content to be relegated um, to the home or to the role of motherhood. If someone is called to that and that alone, that is a beautiful, valid calling. But I think as a collectively, we must realize that we need the feminine voice in every sphere of life and not just the home. Implementing this, I believe, is life-giving, is fertility. And tomorrow we will talk more about practical ways that we can integrate some of the sacred femininity into our daily lives. So stick around tomorrow.